This is our last discussion on the Yeah, yeah. So we must be changed. We must be changed. We must be changed. Straight up with no chase. So we must be changed. We must be changed. We must be changed. Hey, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Declaration of Independence, adopted by Congress July 4th, 1776. Need! What kind of religion is that? It's a hypocritical religion. Doesn't amount to anything. And that's the way we raise our children. Raising to fit in a world that's ungodly rather than to transform it. And then we wonder why they are so mean, feared, and cold blooded. What does it mean to be free? Definition, free, not under control or in the power of another, enjoying civil and political liberty. Are we free? Yeah. I think freedom is it's a state of mind. It's a state of being. If you if you feel like you're not free, then you're not free. If your thought process is, is enslaved or you know what I'm saying still in the box and you're not thinking, if you're not thinking, you're not free. So in my opinion, freedom is knowledge. Once you have knowledge, you have the power to make the decisions that you need to do what you want to do with your life. Freedom, to me, personal freedom means the ability to move freely, whether it's physically, spiritually, emotionally, and to not be hampered by anything external. The ability to do that. Um, so if, even if you have restraints that make you personally bound, that, you, that if you lifted those restraints personally, you could move. Freedom means the ability to do that at any given time. As long as it doesn't impose on someone else's right to freedom. What is freedom? How I define freedom is um, it's a mind that's been free from all negative restraint. And all things that will keep a person from being able to elevate themselves, both mentally and physically. Thinking what I will, at least I think a lot of people think, freedom is I'm not locked up. I'm not a slave. I don't have shackles on me. I don't have this, I don't have that. I'm oppressed. Freedom, people think that not being oppressed equals freedom. But you can be oppressed and still be free. You can be in a jail cell right now and be free. I don't know. Now that's a tough question. <laughs> but right now, I don't even see freedom, and maybe that's sad to say, but I don't even see freedom in the near future, just looking at today. Why? Freedom, not for, with individual, individual freedom I can see, but then I really don't even see that either, because you can think you're free, but my mentality, or what I've learned, is that even the people that think they got it all and think they're free, it's still somebody controlling them up there, whether we see it or not. Bills, bills. Lights, water, gas, phone, movie planet. How old am I? Let me 
me check my bank account and make sure I can pay these bills. At least I got a job. Hello? Hey, Mr. Watson? Hey, Foreman James, how you doing? How you doing? I'm just getting ready to come in and work like I always do. How you doing today? Oh, great. Uh, got some terrible news I need to break on you. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have to lay you off, man. Excuse me? Yep, gonna have to call it curtains. Yep, it's all over. Wait a minute, you wanna run that by me one more time? Sorry to break it to you like that, man, but this is not a joke, this is not a game, and I am not Ashton Kutcher. Oh, come on for what, sir? How did this happen? Sorry to break it to you like that, man, but... Come on, man, 10 years on a job, man, you let this happen to me? What do you mean? Sorry to lay it on you like that, Tim, man, but I know you've been here for a while, you've been cutting the slack, but, uh... They're basically giving your job to some Mexicans, man, who going to work for canned goods. Oh, I get it. Oh, oh, I see what this about. Oh, you want me to be like these fools on the street, huh? You want me to be out here hustling and grinding like these fools. That's what you want. I'm trying to do something with myself. I'm trying to do something with my life. I'm a married man. What do you mean? I got a family to take care of. I mean, those guys are working for canned goods, man. And, you know, the money that you're making, they, they don't want to pay it anymore. Sorry about that, man. That's all I can do is apologize. Okay, that's what it is. Somebody got to be playing a joke on Timothy Watson. Somebody got to be playing a joke on Big T, man. Hey, look, Tim. Don't get me wrong, man. I know that you're a hard worker. And I know that you're a good worker, man. We're going to find a way to get your job back, okay? it has got to be something else that you can do. We're going to work on it, okay? Calm down, Tim. Just calm down, man. What do you mean, sir? I need my job. I got kids that like to eat. Yeah. I feel sorry for you, bro. I know your kids like Happy Meals and things like that. But gonna have to slow down on that for a while, huh? I'm not understanding, sir. I'm not understanding. Yep, sorry about that, man. But maybe you want to try the unemployment office. Maybe they can give you some checks or something that can help you out until you find something different, huh? Tim, before you go, one last thing, man. Hey, check this out. We got your last check, and um, last but not least, we're going to supply you and your family with a $25 gift card at Aunt Felicia's Chicken. Okay? Yeah. You know what? I got something for y'all. And don't mail me my check. I'll be there to get it. Ah! I can't believe this, man. I done gave them 10 years of my life, and they laid me off for some Mexicans working for King. One in 15 Americans live under the poverty level. The U.S. Labor Department reports America's unemployment rate is about 9%. While unemployment rates fell slightly for whites to 8% as of August 2011, black unemployment has surged to 16.7%. Black men rank highest in unemployment at a staggering 19.1%. I would like to think so, think so, uh, when you start thinking about freedom as far as walking out, out of the door and being able to say your opinion like we're saying it now, uh, I look at that as being free. Uh, but in some realities, I believe that there is a ceiling and our freedoms are being taken away, uh, especially after the 9-11 has happened, uh, with the government being able to say, they can tap your phones, uh, doing checks going through the airport. Um, so it's chipping away at the very things that we used to have as freedoms uh, that are taken away, where sometimes you do feel like 
are we really free and not, you know, and it's always a question, especially when you're talking about it uh, from a perspective as a black man. So how can we be free if we treat it like second class citizen? That's our fault. That's our fault? That's our fault. Expand on that a little bit. We haven't, we haven't built on what was being set before us. We got there and then somewhere down the line we got derailed, sidetracked. Uh, we get treated like we second class citizens because we set for second. Some of us, we just settle for second instead of striving for first. Right? Aesthetically and like just energetically, do I feel free? I feel free. But logically, I know I'm not. And um, it's probably evident, you know, I'm a black woman in America, you know, how free can I be? And uh, I got earrings on, my hair is straight, and, you know, all these other um, things that I might be addicted to. I don't know. It's all I've been fed. It's all I know. Media. You know, and intrinsically, I feel like it's something else. You know, I know I was robbed from something much richer, um, something more innate, something, you know, that has meaning and um, a spirituality, a connection, you know, to the rest of the, the world and the galaxy. Uh, when you talk about freedom, and I guess in the context of uh, black people, and being in American society, we were uh, so regulated, so constrained, so treated as uh, property that uh, that would shape my answer in, in regards to what is freedom. And I think freedom for us would be the freedom to be a human being rather than a piece of property because we, you know, the, they even call the type of slavery or the, the type of uh, bondage that we were involved in is chattel for property. So I guess number one, not to be a piece of property. Number two, to have the uh, basic ability to make life choices the way any other uh, group uh, within uh, the United States. Three would be to enjoy all of the benefits of, of uh, citizenship as defined by uh, the country in which we do. Reside uh, for the ability to think and uh, analyze and uh, come up with our own uh, solutions and even our own questions to different problems. I think that's a form of freedom. When you look at the system, and I think what my grandfather said when they freed his father, they gave the white man the pencil and the black man the shovel mm. and that pencil is what has affected us for the last 400 years was that pencil writing laws segregated jim crow laws that we could not live as american citizens we could go to the war and fight in world war one world war two the korean war vietnam war afghanistan iraq mm -hmm. but we still didn't have the same benefits and opportunities exactly. that everybody else had. Freedom to me mm -hmm. in the wilderness of North America, okay. freedom to me means to have a proper and a true knowledge of who you are and we are. Mm. That's what freedom is to me. When we can have the knowledge. proper education when we can be taught the truth just to know, just to have the knowledge of ourselves, to know who we really are in America. God did not create black people to sing, we shall overcome, letting black white people spit on them, beat them down, and try to crawl into their world. You think God created us for that? I don't think so. I think God created us with dignity to be able to do for ourselves what any other people are doing for themselves. I think God did that for us. Hey baby, what's up? I'm at the bus stop, you know where I'm at.
I know I'm gonna pay the bill, baby. Calm down, I'm gonna pay it. Look, I already gotta go down to City Hall. I gotta go to the unemployment office and I gotta turn this application in by two o'clock and the bus is over an hour late. I'll see you when I get home. Man, I'm tired of this. Bus over an hour late. Uh, what's on your mind? Miss my appointment. See these DVDs got that new music on the mixtape. I'm good, man. You shouting at few? I said I'm good, bro. Damn, what's wrong with you today, bro? Hey, what's up, baby? I got that medical, got them exotics, loud packs, whatever you need. I'm good, bro. You look like you need something, and you need it quick, bro. Man, I'm good, man. Just like I told my man, I'm good. Man. Hey, Vanderbilt. Hey, what's going on? I need to get those supplies over here. Hey, no excuses, buddy. All right. Hey, oh, I got a client coming. I'll call you back. Hey, how you doing? Can I help you? How you doing, sir? Timothy Watson, man. Just coming to turn in my app. Um, I saw your ad in the paper. Said you guys were looking for a mechanical helper, or more than qualified for the job. Oh man, it's two o'clock. We stop accepting applications. I know, sir. I apologize for that, but the buses are running so late. They're running so terrible. I had to even catch a cab to get here, sir. We have a thousand people today for ten positions. There's nothing I can do. Sorry, I can't help you. Sir, you just don't understand what I went through to get here, sir. Sir, can you at least put my app on file, sir? Sorry, I can't help you. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, I should have got it in with Big Pearl again. Hey, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson. Been reviewing your application, and it looks like your previous employer wasn't paying his unemployment insurance. Um, so we're going to have to deny your claim. Are you serious? I'm afraid so. Let me see that. Mm, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Sir, is this something that you can do? Can you pull some type of strings? I mean, I have a wife, I have kids, I have bills at home that needs to be paid, sir. I'm sorry, I can't help. You know what it feels like? To not be able to pay your bills? To not be able to put shoes on your kids' feet? You have no idea, sir. No idea. You have a good day. Okay. That's good, yeah. Well, just just get everybody together and we all meet up. Um, your house, my house. Yeah. I get off about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Oh, girl, you know that because it's payday. Hello. Wait, that's, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Yeah. All right, somebody, yeah, they, yeah, just came in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you. <laughs> You're so crazy. All right, girl. Bye. How may I help you today, sir? I got a letter from the city stating that I need to pay my taxes on my home in 30 days, and I was just trying to see if I can get some help. You know, I know you got a busy day ahead of you and all that, but I would really like to get some help if I can, if that's okay. It seems like they have sent you four notices. No, this is the first notice I received, ma'am. Well, stay here on the computer. Well, I know what came to my house, and there was only one, and I just came down here and brought it to you, and it's right there. Mm -hmm. Look, before you break something, is it is there anything that you can help me with, ma'am? No. Let me guess. Excuse me. You can't help me either. 
I see why James Evans left the show. Just can't win. Just can't win. And you know what? When you at the spot tonight, you have a drink for me because I'm struggling. You have a good day, sir. You have a better one. The U.S. has an incarceration rate of 743 per 100,000 of its national population. The highest in the world. The U.S. prison and corrections institution is a multi-billion dollar industry. The United States imprisons more of its racial minorities than any other country in the world. Blacks account for 39.4% of total prison population, but are only 12.6% of the total U.S. population. In major cities across the country, 80% of young African Americans now have criminal records. My generation right now, I'm worried about like our generation because we don't have any true form of leadership. We don't have any organization or unity in order to define a cause to fight for or a struggle to fight for. We're all, one person is, we want uh, college tuition. Somebody else is, I'm trying to sell weed. Somebody else is, I'm just chasing whatever, whatever. Somebody else is dancing with like, we don't have a defined thing for, for our generation. There's so many problems that confront our generation, like debt, education in Detroit. For black males, the, the graduation graduation rate is 25%. So, like, that's a problem that that's a that's a huge problem. Uh, over the summer, 27 people got shot in a weekend. That's that's a problem. That was they pumped that on the news. They pumped that and pumped that. And with them pumping that, it's like we get the idea of wow, we kill us. So we go and we live up to that expectation. We live out those means of what they're saying. We we make it true. And from a Pan-African point of view, I see some of the same issues that affect our liberty to be global issues. So, for instance, the, the rate of black people being murdered in parts of the world, the percentages are similar. So, in America, we, like in Detroit, we say, um, you know, you have this many young black males that are killed. Well, even though we have a lower murder rate in Toronto, the, the percentages are probably similar just because we have challenges. Um, with things that affect our liberty, so our access to things. I don't think we're, I, I don't think as black folks we are free anywhere just because our access to resources creates an issue for us to be free. So access to whether it's clean drinking water in parts of the world, access to quality education, access to something as basic as health care provides an issue that allow, that tempers our freedom. But if you have a connection to the suffrage that goes on in the world and especially, you know, where we are, you know, in a third world city, if you will, um, then you can't possibly not have um, a part of you that is enslaved. You know, because of what you see your people go through. Um, I think there's still stereotypes uh, that play into the way people perceive and view us and their reaction, not just from the oppressive group, but internally. And I remember Jesse Jackson talking about walking down the street and seeing a group of black males, and he got uptight. He was in the city at night, and he was concerned, wow, these young black males because he had taken on the idea that a group of young black males must be negative. And when they passed, he said, wow, he felt relief. And then he had to re-examine his own feelings and, and why did he react that way. I can remember the police stopping a very good friend of mine who is a physician and surgeon, and his wife is now a judge, stopping us in the middle of Livernoy, having our hands up patting us down looking for something that they never found, that we never had or did. I've seen situations even today in the city of Detroit where the police department have been abusive to African Americans. So yes, we are free. We are freer than what we were 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100 years ago. Okay. But it's racism is alive and well where they wore 
the white sheets and the white plume hats, mm -hmm. now they wear three-piece suits <laughs> with <laughs> shirt and tags. You start worrying about the streets once the streets interject themselves into your house. Then you say, well, I got to worry about these niggas walking around my house. I don't know what they're up to now. You know, I think somebody, one of them neighbors came in and got my TV the other day. So I, you start thinking about it. You see them then, you know. You didn't see them before, but now, since they, they like they intrude, intruded into your world, now you start thinking about them, you know. Not, not any helpful thinking about them, but a protective, defensive thinking about them. It's oppression. That's what governments are built. That's why we have a hierarchy. Well, that's why we have one person at the top, everybody trickle down. And all these lawmakers to let you know you oppress. And know that you will lose your freedom if you break these laws that we oppressing you with. Looking back to what they accomplished with the civil rights movement and where we are now, they accomplished a lot, but what they did was made a stepping stone for us to continue it. And between then and 2011, there's been some sort of disconnect. I often think, like, because of the 80s or whatever, and crack hit um, my generation, like, we're the first generation to come up as far as being an offspring of what happened then. So. I think that's another huge reason why we're so disconnected and we're so violent. We didn't have, we don't have leadership now. We didn't have parents growing up, so many of us. So, I mean, we we're basically lost, but there is still hope, and we can still come together and, and work it out. So that the goals were there. It was about survival. It was about uh, equality, and I know people. We used to shout freedom now, but. Nobody was trying to define what freedom was, you know, it was like, just get this oppression off of us. It, it, it was a, a different time, and so when things like that would happen, it would help you react. Um, I think that what caught my generation's attention more than anything as a young man was Emmett Till. I couldn't believe that for what he was accused of doing, they would kill him. And, I think one of the most popular Jet magazines ever was when they showed his physical face. And I remember I was a kid and they were certain, you know, you were, have you seen the Emmett Till? And, and everyone knew the Emmett Till story. And even though Mississippi was a long ways away, it still helped us understand the, you know, some of the racial dynamics in America. Oh no, I believe that the struggle continues. I believe that our parents fought and not saying that they didn't win the fight, they made a few steps in the fight, and but it's still a lot of fighting to go. I mean, people think we made it because we got Obama as the president, but if we made it, then I wouldn't be laying off a thousand more people next month, or people would be able to still be able to get education. So we haven't really typically made it because we still, if you low income, even if you're black in some states or situations, we still don't get the same amount that other people get. So it's still a fight. It's still a struggle. You are not tuned in and rocking with the mess. One of Detroit most want, I mean, most finest pastor, Willie Stacks, here on Heavenly Stacks Ministry. Well, we will pray for your money whenever you in need. I know, now listen, listen to me good now. I know you got issues. I know you got more issues than Ebony Magazine. But here today, we gonna pray for them issues because I know you can't pay your rent. I know the landlord pulling up and different kind of cars popping up on you. I know you got bills to pay. I know things are going on. I know you got to go and stand in that unemployment office and stand in that line. I know you done lost your job. I know your baby mama done sent you child support letters. I know she done called you to court. She ain't doing nothing to dang on herself. Pray, we don't pray for her. Pray for the baby mama's love. I know. You got issues. But here today, Timothy Watson. 
We gonna pray for you. All you gotta do is call right now. If you can hurry up and call. Us at 1-900-G-E-T-P-A-I-D. Once again, that's 1-900-G-E-T-P-A-I-D. The gas company called already for one person, said they're going to give them another week. I know times are hard. I know what you're going through. Look at me. I was in your boat before. I used to have a beat up 1994 tourist station wagon. Now I'm riding butterfly doze. Hallelujah. I used to live over there on Chalmers in the flat off Hazel Ridge. By the liquor store. Now look at me. I'm out in Bloomfield with the circular driveway. <laughs> White folks cut for grass. Thank you, Jesus. I used to have a wife who ate pig feet and ham hocks. But now I got a wife who danced in music videos. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you can get like me. All you got to do is call that number. I guarantee you. You can get like me. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I ain't calling that crap. Man, I guess freedom ain't free. The average American is exposed to about 3,000 advertising messages a day. Globally, corporations spend over $620 billion each year to make their products seem desirable and to convince us to buy them. The U.S. media landscape is dominated by massive corporations through a history of mergers and acquisitions. They have concentrated their control over what we see, hear, and read. You know, we have no idea who we are. We have no idea. All we know is what our oppressors have taught us and exposed us to. In the country as a whole, or in your region, or in your city, or in your school, or your household. All you know is what you were exposed to in those places. And that only so much was allowed, period. Only so much is allowed for each place. Because we, we are able to divide, I hear, um, people say all the time, oh, Americans this, or Canadians this, or Caribbean people this, or Africans this. We're all one people. We all came from the motherland, and we, we have ended up in the diaspora. The minute we start to change our language to reconnect ourselves and not see those differences and start to make movements in that way, I think will be the beginning of our real ability to be free. Them learning to appreciate what education is going to do for them. They need to see that because of all the fairness. People with education fail. So if they don't realize that, and then they don't get education, we're doing for the worst of the group of people growing up that we have now. The next generation might be worse than the last one. And then who can teach them? We got a big problem with self and And that's what we feel. Yes, freedom. Freedom is not always free. It's something that you shouldn't have to earn. You should automatically have it being born as an American citizen. But okay. we're still suffering from the same segregation, discrimination, and on down the line. Okay. So I think as a community, um, we're, we're breaking down. And I think a part of it is, is the poverty and, and the destruction of the family. The African-American family had always been resilient, despite all the ravages of, of disconnects and stuff and slavery and beyond, but it was still a unit that was very viable. You know, I remember uh, relatives coming and staying with us for uh, a while as they came from the South to get a job in the North. Um, no matter what happened, the family was always there as a support piece. Independence as a people, or as a people being able to make our own decisions, own our own businesses, um, call our own shots as a people, just not me being free, just not my own individualistic freedom. I believe that freedom is when everybody is free.
once you know, mm. once you have the true knowledge of yourself and who you are, that freedom, then you have peace. You have peace because the acronyms for peace means, quote, proper education always corrects error. Mm. That's peace. So once we have the proper education, mm -hmm. that's what we need, the proper education and know who, I was, who we are, mm -hmm. we'll have peace and we'll have freedom. We'll have freedom, we'll have justice, and we'll have equality right here on the planet Earth. Not no off in the sky, but right here. Right. Where if we can educate our children, right. our children to know who they are, they will live in peace. We won't be robbing each other, shooting each other, killing each other, because we'll know who we are, and we will love ourselves, and we will love one another. That's what freedom means to me, and that's peace. Peace, man. Question of the day. Are you awake or are you asleep? You know, you say some people in your life for a reason, and some for a season. Why? I don't know. I tell them this, you know this, boy. You can add up the stats. We come consecutive, no breaks, no slacks. We young executives, no weight, no lack. We hungry as ever when we do it to the max. Power movement, you heard that? Straight forward speaking, my earth foreign thinking. Soul music, straight about the Midwest region. Detroit to be exact, ERB is on the track, and I'm ACE. Music Wanda is the camp. It's not like an email, a text, or a fax. This is live connection, direct contact. Why my people gotta go from freedom to fascism? If you stop kissing some asses, you can raise the masses. I see it from a different view, like Malcolm's glasses. My mama named me Ajane, I won't be average. I'ma make a better way for generations after. I appeal to the hill, can't be no cancer. But I'm ruthless as lupus when seeking an answer. I put God first, and the rest don't matter. You can try to tell me different, but you ain't no better. I said, I said you ain't no better. Hey man, you ain't no better. How you tell me when you ain't no better? But are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freaking than seeking meaning? Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason? Are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freaking than seeking meaning? Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason? Hey yo, what's up with the business is? Doctors can't determine what the sickness is Running through my veins like Ice Cube Rude boy, they be like, ooh, he a nice dude And you know that I got the right tools Handyman with the fix if you wanna act a fool I'm on my grown folks shit, no curfew I'm having better luck, nah, no horseshoe When you're going get hard, I suggest you just Keep it moving, even if you have to adjust I'm in love with life but it's more like lust You only get one shot So indeed I must Take aim Waiting for the right Opportunity to strike a mic Hit the bullseye twice I take flight Higher than the birds in the sky So in other words you could say I'm a fly but guy are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freaking than seeking meaning? Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason? Are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freedom? I'm seeking meaning. Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason? Time passes, ashes to ashes. I see flashes. We the problem, but they don't ask us. We the future, then take care of us. In these streets, don't know who to trust. They don't care who they hit when the caps bust. Get paid, but it ain't much. Hit it every time, brother, but it ain't luck. Get free if you got nuts. Or bend over for a quick buck. You a fiend for material things and such Smoke alert on the music on a team bus Sky high is the theme when we team up Bye bye fly high watch me beam up I return to the sun like I'm King Tut Whoever talking loud as yo he ain't tough If you wanna do about it then I said enough but are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freaking than seeking meaning? Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason? Are we doing more drinking than we doing thinking? Are we doing more weeding than we doing reading? Are we doing more freaking or seeking meaning? Is it right? Is it wrong? What is life? What's the reason?
<laughs> so we must be changed, we must be changed, we must be changed. Free from all the inner psychological imprisonments before we can liberate ourselves from an, ex from an external reality of racism, powerlessness, and oppression. So we must be changed, we must be changed, we must be changed. So we must be changed, we must be changed, we must be changed.